Just a second. Hi there. Hello. Are you Ernie? Yes. Turn you up? Yes. Look, um, what I was thinking, we'll be both under the covers. Are you taking pictures? Yes. Oh, okay. You know that'll cost extra, right? Yeah, sure. Not a problem. Um, yeah, so we'll be under the covers. Having sex? Yes. No. No. It would just look like we're having sex. No sex? No. No sex. <laughs> of any kind. So, the camera's on a timer. When the red light stops flashing, I'm going to leap forward like I'm trying to stop it happening. And I want you to look at the camera like, <sighs> you're surprised. Why? So it looks like we've just been caught having sex. <laughs> Why don't we just have sex? <laughs> You can take as many pictures as you want. You can have sex with a prostitute. No offence. Uh, no offence taken, I think. Right. Um, you just get in the, in the bed and I'll set the timer. Whoa! What are you doing? I mean, you want me naked, right? No. I'm going to be sitting in bed with a naked girl. I'm married. Okay, I'm totally confused. Can I rely on your discretion? Of course. I've been in city council for six years. Perfectly clean re record. Outstanding on all accounts. <laughs> I'm a regular boy scout. We're a dying breed. I never get anywhere. Everyone else in government, they've got their skeletons in the closet and their scandals and they keep moving on up to higher offices. Not me. That's what I thought as I secretly released some photos and at the right time of course and bang, my career would start to move. Does your wife know about this? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, she's rather supportive. Look, Annie, why don't we just go out to dinner? I'll have the way to take pictures of us together. A young, attractive woman on your arm will get plenty of people talking. It's really a scandal. I know, but you know, you should never underestimate the power of people's imagination. The power of gossip. Yeah, you should be right. Of course, I'll have to charge you the same. Hey, maybe I'll get used as a tax write-off. That'll, um, that'll make some laughs. Now you're thinking. Fantastic, have it there. In the same way I felt Amber didn't see that mirror, and so therefore it was always a, a performance that was drip, that was um, sucked into the reader, I, I would say the same thing about yours, David. You actually had, you placed the eye lines on both sides of the camera, but you didn't actually see them, because there would have been, so therefore you perfunctorily, you know, so the bed will be here, but I would have thought it's all, it's just... So suddenly the dialogue becomes a distraction. Does that make sense? It's where, it's where Annette was able to arrive at because she really did, you know, so, what are you doing here? What are you doing here now? You know what I mean? It's a distraction. So you've really got to give yourself that. Charlotte, Charlotte? Charlotte was able to establish that when she looked out of the window. It was like, you know, and she just became that reflective thing. So now this is secondary. But that space makes you make the dialogue 150% important. And it's not. The dialogue delivery is not important. It's the character that's important. And that's what we're finding. The people who are popping out there are the people who find the qualities, the unique qualities of a character that apply to them and them alone. Because that's what you have to deliver in an audition. Because that's what I'm going to remember. And then I'm going to get you back in for the role you were born to play. So, what do you do? What sort of work do you do, David? Yeah, police officer. Police officer. Then you would have come across some really dumb criminals. <laughs> Most of them are. Big Most of them are. And you know the guy that you just go, you silly bastard, you should never have been, you're in the wrong place. Do you, do you know that yeah. kind of guy? That's what I want you to play. And I want you to stand here, and it's like, I, I just want to, this guy's, this guy, because uh, let's face it, this guy should not be trying to organise sex photos. You're playing the dumb guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, the 
think of those guys that are sort of, you know, and it would be if you're if you've got a guy in the interview room and he is just dumb and out of his depth, it really is it's like, mm-hmm. And that's why she's going, she's going, hang on a second, now I'm confused. We're having sex or we're not having sex? Do you know what I mean? And oh. No, I can't have sex with a prostitute. Do you know what I mean? It would be really simplistic, basic stuff, wouldn't it? Mm. Okay, let's try that. And smile lots. Go. Just a second. Hi there. Hello. Are you Ernie? Yes. Tanya, right? Yes. This is what I'm thinking. Now, you'd be under the covers. Are you taking pictures? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You know that'll cost extra, right? Yeah, sure. So, we're under the covers. Having sex? Yes. No. We just look like we're having sex. No sex? No. No sex of any kind. So, we're under the covers. And, um, the camera will be on the timer. And I'm going to set the timer. When the red light goes off, I'm going to leap forward like this. Trying to stop it from happening. And you're going to look at the camera like you're totally surprised. Why? So it looks like we've been caught having sex. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Great work. We felt better. Yes, of course we felt That's the territory. Have a seat. And this is, this is just borrowing from drama training. It is that whole thing that they say have a substitute, but the key to having a substitute, it must be a real life substitute. It must be somebody who is in your real life. So that's why when I went work, working with Mark to sort of try and find a child, because I wanted him to be, hey, how are you? Do you know what I mean? I wanted him to be that simplistic, genuine, unaffected, so he wouldn't be embarrassed, so he, he, he wouldn't finish the line with, um, oh, and by the way, I don't use the toilet because it's, uh, it's all backed up in there. Do you know what I mean? And he's charming and...